September 4th, 1939. The Royal Air Force is about to carry out its first offensive strike against the German war machine, using 15 Bristol Blenheim bombers. Acting on reconnaissance from the previous day, two prime targets have been identified at the port of Wilhelmshaven. German cruiser Emden and the heavy cruiser Admiral Scheer. This mission will see the first bombs dropped against Germany in World War II. Just the day before, and immediately following Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's radio broadcast declaring war on Germany, a lone Bristol Blenheim Mark IV of 139 Squadron, piloted by Flying Officer Andrew McPherson, departed Oriev Witten in Cambridgeshire for a reconnaissance mission to the German strategic port of Wilhelmshaven. The port and shipyard is located on the western side of the Jade Bight, in Lower Saxony, northern Germany and has long been used for the building and maintenance and repair of German naval ships. Now that war had once again returned to Europe, Wilhelmshaven was once again high on the list for the attention of Allied intelligence. The reconnaissance sortie the previous day had been a success. Flying over the port at 24,000 feet, a number of warships had been spotted both moored at the port as well as anchored just off the shoreline. Of particular note was the 7,000 ton light cruiser Emden, along with the 15,000 ton heavy cruiser Admiral Scheer. Along with her sisters, the Deutschland and the Admiral Graf Spee, Admiral Scheer was designed to have more firepower than any other cruiser fast enough to keep up with, and only a few ships in the British or French fleet were able to match her top speed of 28 knots. The Treaty of Versailles had limited their size to 10,000 tons of displacement, however, when fully loaded, these ships had a maximum displacement of just over 15,000 tonnes, earning them the nickname Pocket Battleship. Suffice to say, Admiral Scheer would be an obvious hazard to Allied shipping, and so this opportunity to destroy her could not be passed over, and so early in the war. Another success in the reconnaissance flight was that McPherson's Blenheim flew by totally unnoticed, and was not challenged by any anti-aircraft defences, and so the RAF could now count on an element of surprise. Three squadrons of Blenheims have been selected for this mission. In Suffolk, England sits RAF Watersham, home to 107 Squadron and 110 Squadron. Both of these squadrons have been tasked to each provide five Blenheim Mark IVs, and to complete the 15 aircraft sortie will be five Blenheim Mark IVs from 139 Squadron at RAF Witten. Each aircraft was loaded with two 500-pound general-purpose bombs and carried a crew of four. The pilot, a navigator, an air gunner who also operated the wireless, and an observer to identify the targets. The weather on the 4th of September was heavily overcast, with a strong northwesterly wind. Because of this, the attack on the target was to be carried out at low level, just 100 feet or so above mast height of the target's ships. Dropping bombs at such a low height has many risks, one of which is being caught up in your own bomb blast. To prevent this from happening to the attacking aircraft, 11 second fuses were used to allow each Blenheim to clear its blast radius. The mission brief was clearly laid out. Attack the primary targets if positively identified. In the event of not finding the primary targets, alternative targets were to be destroyers either in the Jade Bight or at the Schilling Roads area of the port. A special note was made of the importance of not attacking merchant ships or injuring civilian population. Bombs must only be dropped on battleships or destroyers. Bombs must not be dropped on the Bauhafen Harbour. With the crews briefed and the aircraft readied, it was time. And shortly after 3.30 in the afternoon at RAF Witten, 139 Squadron began their takeoff rolls and climbed into the air. At RAF Watersham at 345, 110 Squadron were also taken off, followed 15 minutes later at 4 pm by 107 Squadron. 15 Bristol Blenheims were now airborne and heading for Germany. The weather en route did not improve, in fact, if anything, it worsened. The mist and low cloud was frequently interspersed with prolonged periods of heavy rain. And this forced the fleet of Blenheims to fly just above wave top height, as visibility was close to zero. First to arrive on scene was 139 Squadron. Now, whereas the day previous, Flying Officer McPherson and his 139 Squadron crew successfully located Wilhelmshaven, 
His colleagues on this occasion found the weather just too difficult and were unable to locate any targets. And as their instructions were explicit, bombs to be dropped on battleships or destroyers only, they had no choice but to jettison their bombs and turn for home. Next into the area were the five Blenheims of 110 Squadron. Because they were approaching the moored warships at low level, they were easily spotted by the crews on board. However, no urgency or battle stations were called for, as the Bristol Blenheim has a certain similarity to the Junkers JU-88, and so the ship's crews simply looked on, unconcerned. That is, until they saw RAF markings, which by then was too late. The Blenheim 5 ship formation broke off into two pairs and a single, and commenced their attack. The weather at this point had cleared up slightly and gave the approaching bombers a much improved view. The lead aircraft, piloted by Flight Lieutenant Duran, was able to pick out the heavy cruiser Admiral Scheer dead ahead. Dropping to just 100 feet above the mastheads, Duran released both of his 500 pound bombs, scoring direct hits. One of the bombs had bounced off Admiral Scheer's thick deck armour and into the water, and the other had become embedded in the deck. Neither bomb had exploded. Following up in his Blenheim was Pilot Officer Lings, who attacked Admiral Scheer from the side. His bombs narrowly fell to the side of the cruiser. Sergeant Han was next up to attack the pocket battleship, but his bombs were considerably off target. Whilst the Admiral Scheer was being attacked by a trio of Blenheims, the light cruiser Emden had also been spotted and was being lined up. By now, the element of surprise had passed, and all the ships in the area had opened up with their anti-aircraft fire. By a remarkable coincidence, the Blenheim that was approaching the cruiser Emden was piloted by flying officer Henry Lovell Emden. His aircraft was now being peppered with anti-aircraft fire and he could not avoid it. He crashed directly into the bow of the Emden, killing him and his three crew. Also killed were nine sailors on board, along with 20 wounded, making them the first German naval casualties of the war. The remaining 110 Squadron Blenheim, flown by Sergeant Abbott, failed to locate a target, and so he turned for home. Now when 110 Squadron had arrived, they were met with an oblivious and unconcerned air defence. The same could not be said for 107 Squadron, who by now were arriving into a barrage of anti-aircraft fire. Such was the ferocity of the flak that the first three Blenheims to commence their attack runs were shot down. One of these, flown by Canadian Sergeant Prince, was able to carry out a controlled ditching, and all three crew on board were pulled from the aircraft and taken prisoner. Sergeant Prince would succumb to his injuries in hospital, but his crewmates Sergeant Booth and A.C. Slattery became the first Allied prisoners of the war and they remained captive in Stalag 357 until April of 1945 when it was liberated by Allied forces. The fourth Blenheim to attack was successful in releasing his bombs, however it seems that the 11 second delay fuse on one of the bombs didn't work properly and it exploded on impact. The resultant blast destroyed the Blenheim in the process. And the final Blenheim, flown by Pilot Officer Stevens, was unable to locate a target and so turned for home with his bombs still on board. By 8.30 that evening, all of the surviving aircraft had returned to Wattersham and Witten, with Pilot Officer Stevens landing his aircraft at Sutton Bridge. This opening raid by the Royal Air Force was regarded as having mixed results. The Admiral Shear escaped with little to no damage, and although the Emden took considerable damage, she was repaired and returned to service within three months. The Ministry of Information, however, declared a propaganda success, reporting that the Royal Air Force Blenheim crews were proud to have been chosen to strike the first blow at the German war machine. For their part in the operation, Flying Officer McPherson and Flight Lieutenant Duran were both awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, the first time these gallantry awards were given during the war. All of the RAF air crews who died during the raid were recovered and buried in the presence of a German naval honour guard with full military honours in Union flag draped coffins at Giestermunde Cemetery, later being transferred to Becklingen War Cemetery in the German town of Soltau. This act of military respect between warring nations would be repeated during a near identical reciprocal German attack on Royal Navy ships at Anker in the Firth of Forth, just a month later. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing.